What would you do if I asked you to write a program for your PyPico that flashed a red LED every 300 milliseconds, a different green LED every 500 milliseconds, also handle serial transmission on the PyPico's UART bus, all at the same time when a user presses a button, read a value off of the ADC bus. You may solve this by setting some compare to counter timers for the LEDs and handling the serial and button pushes via pin change interrupts. But as your solution grows, it becomes extremely monolithic and hard to modify. Adding or removing features causes you to have to rethink the entire design of your system. A simpler solution, and what we're going to talk about today, would be to use an operating system. Specifically, we'll be talking about free RTOS, an open source and free to use real-time operating system, or RTOS, and how we can use it on the Raspberry Pi Pico. A real-time operating system is like a normal operating system in that it appears that it allows a system to execute multiple tasks at the same time. In reality, a CPU core can only execute one thread of execution at a time. By using a regularly timed scheduler to quickly switch between threads of execution, an operating system allows you to create multiple tasks that appear to happen all at once. Specific to a real-time operating system is the idea of task priority, where one task may be more critical than another, and as a result will preempt the execution of lower priority tasks. The idea is that instead of evenly sharing the time slots of execution, the programmer can give certain tasks higher priority of execution when competing for time and make the outcome of the program more predictable. If we're using an RTOS for the original scenario, when the user presses a button, that would be a higher priority task than the LEDs, because the user's input must be processed. And as a result, the user pressing a button would preempt blinking the LED. We don't have to dive deep into the internals of free RTOS or other RTOSs today. That alone could take several videos to get through. All you need to know is that free RTOS gives you the ability to run multiple tasks at the same time on a microcontroller. With that being said, let's get to programming. Also, before I forget, I wanted to let everyone know that we started a Discord for our channel. The link is in the description. Go check the server out, hang out with other members of the low-level gang, and ask questions if you get stuck in these tutorials. All right, so here I have the Blink LED tutorial source code up. In its current state, this code makes the LED on the RB2040 Blink pretty straightforward. Today, we'll be changing this to include free RTOS and have the RTOS Blink two separate LEDs, the original pin 25 LED and one on pin 2, at different intervals at the same time. First, we need to clone the source code repo of the free RTOS kernel. The kernel source code can be found at this URL, which is in the description box. Using RTOS is different than using normal operating systems where, instead of being given an executable that runs as a kernel, RTOS is ship a source code where you compile in all of your tasks to create one large binary. Next, we need to set up our CMake file to compile free RTOS as a static library. Compiling it as a static library allows us to build it into our program, again, as one binary, and eventually one UF2 file that we can put onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. We create a glob in CMake, which is just a set of files specified by a wildcard, so star.c. Also, we include the porting code that ports free RTOS to an ARM Cortex-M0 processor, which the RP2040 core is based off of. Finally, we include the source code for heap4. So RTOSs normally come with several heap implementations based on memory or timing constraints or speed constraints. Heap4 works for us in this case. Next, we add a line saying that our project Blink requires free RTOS to be compiled in. Finally, we add our include directories so the compiler knows where to look for our header files. Okay, awesome. Now our CMIC file is complete. Let's write some C. So the first change is that we need to include a few additional header files. The first is free rtos.h, which brings in all the APIs for the OS itself, like the scheduler and all those goodies. Next, we will include free rtosconfig.h, which is a header file where we can tweak specific variables in our rtos deployment. For example, the minimum stack size, preemptive versus cooperative scheduling and execution, etc. Finally, we include task.h, which is a header file that includes exports for the free RTOS task API. Next, we want to take the code that blinks our green LED and move it to its own separate function. This function will be executed as a task, meaning the RTOS will schedule it against other tasks based on its priority. Okay, now that the code lives in its own function and eventually its own task, we need to tell the OS to execute that function as a task. To do this, we will use the free RTOS task create API. A link to additional documentation for the free RTOS API can be found below in the description. The function x task create takes a few arguments, the first being the function to be called as a task, the second being the name of the task as tracked by the OS, 
Next is the size of the stack. So if the function that we're calling or the task uses more memory than this number, the OS will throw an exception. Next is a pointer to the arguments for this function. We don't have any arguments for the blink LED example, so there's no arguments here in this case, so null. Next is the task priority. So this being an LED blink is a fairly low priority task, and as a result, we'll make it idle priority. Idle priority means that only execute this task if there is nothing else to do. So if the system is at idle, run this task. And then finally, we specify a pointer to a task handle. This task handle will become a handle that points to this task's information block. We can use this handle in the future to stop the task, delete it, restart it, etc. Another modification we have to make is we have to change sleep millisecond to v task delay. v task delay is a free RTOS API call that will allow other tasks to execute in the background while this task sleeps. Now that we have a task created, we start the scheduler. Once the scheduler executes, no code below it should execute. The scheduler runs forever and executes the created tasks from the task list based on their stated priority and current running state. Okay, so with that, we should be able to CMake our build system, compile our program, and upload it to the Pico. Okay, and as usual, to make our projects, we make a build directory, we CMake into the previous directory, and then we can make the UF2 file. Uh, this takes a minute to compile, but not too long. You are compiling an entire operating system here. Okay, once that completes, uh, you're able to copy the UF2 file onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. And then once that's on there, you should see that your Raspberry Pi Pico is in fact blinking. You have one LED that's blinking on and off as it's supposed to. Um, cool, so now the question is, how do we make another LED get involved in the process? Well, modifying the code is actually fairly simple. Uh, we literally just have to copy and paste the green LED task code uh, after we create a new pin. So copy this code, name it red LED task, and maybe we'll make it uh, 10 times a second instead of once every second. Uh, I did name it red LED instead, so we gotta change that. Now we just copy the instantiation of a task, call it something else, and then make a new task handle. And then make sure we set the pin to a GPIO out, which I failed to do. Um, great, so with that code, uh, you can build that and put it onto your Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, unfortunately, in the creation of this video, I actually bricked my Raspberry Pi Pico uh, I wired an LED in reverse and then grounded it to the board and that actually fried the processor. So in the future, I will have a short that comes out that shows you guys the final product. But in the meantime, this should work for you. Um, if you have success, do me a favor, drop a comment. Let me know how it goes. If you guys like this video, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.